So if you're watching this video, you may have already got your yoga teacher training certificate. If so, congratulations. Or maybe you're on your way to that point and just thinking ahead and wondering what to do next, how to go about getting some yoga classes in your schedule, getting some experience, maybe setting up your own stuff or maybe working in a gym somewhere. It's hard to know what is the right step to take when you're first getting started out as a yoga instructor. So let's have a look at some of the options. I'll give you a bit of advice from my experience um, and hopefully give you some ideas of what to do next. So it really depends what your goal is. You may just be looking to teach yoga as something to do for enjoyment, something that you want to do on the side, a little side hustle if you like, that you're not really that bothered about making loads of money from it, you just wanna do something that you enjoy. In that case, I would recommend trying to get a job working in a yoga studio. Maybe just one class a week, maybe a couple of classes. If not a yoga studio, then maybe a gym or a health club. See if you can get your foot in the door. If they are completely full up with teachers at the moment, then see if you could get on the substitute teacher list so that whenever there's a yoga teacher who's off on holiday or ill you might be called upon as a cover teacher so you can start getting some experience and this may be the right way to go whatever your goal is long term because working in a studio or a gym means that you don't have to do any of the kind of grunt work to get the classes up and running it's likely to be an established gym or studio so they've already got a client base they're going to add you into their timetable so you don't have to worry about any of the admin really of getting people booked in of advertising you just get to to turn up and do the fun bit and hopefully if it's a studio they've already got yoga mats bolsters blankets bricks all of the props that you might need so you don't need to invest in anything right now you can just go in and get some experience working with different people different body types levels of ability ages because chances are in your yoga teacher training course the other people on the course are probably pretty able-bodied pretty flexible and so it can take a little while to adjust to teaching a group of people who maybe are not quite so bendy. So getting experience in a studio, great way to start. However, if you are looking to make yoga your full-time job one day, or you're looking to make it a substantial part of your monthly income, then just teaching in studios and gyms is probably not gonna be enough financially. The rate of pay in gyms and studios isn't great typically so you're likely to need to be teaching you know 20 classes plus every week to make ends meet and once you start teaching regularly you'll realize that anything above about 10 classes a week you're likely to burn out to feel really exhausted and perhaps even lose your enthusiasm for teaching yoga in my experience going down that route of just working in studios filling up your schedule running around teaching classes back to back in different locations for me, that was a recipe for disaster. So the other way to go is to start setting up your own gig, your own little business, to find a venue, hire it out and set up some classes. And I know that can sound a little intimidating, but long term, it's gonna be far more beneficial financially. It's gonna give you the freedom to be in control of what kind of classes you're putting on and when. And it's really cool to run your own little business stressful and you know full of challenges along the way as well but great fun very rewarding very fulfilling so let's run through the steps from the very beginning to having your classes up and running step one find a venue maybe you can find a studio space a wellness center somewhere that hires out on an hourly rate personally i really like using simple venues like village halls church halls because they are quite quiet peaceful places that tend to be very simple and unpretentious and for me that's what i really want to project in the yoga that i'm teaching so that might be a consideration church halls village halls they tend to have quite big open spaces that are great for yoga the cost of hiring is going to vary enormously from cities to towns from studios to halls so shop around see what the price structure is like in your area how much you're going to be having to shell out each week for your venue and of course the other consideration when you're looking for venues is when they are available one of the things that you will have to come to terms with if you want to teach yoga as your job is you're gonna have to work some evenings and weekends you can try putting classes on during the day but the chances of filling up those classes are fairly slim so when you're looking for venues that's a big consideration as well trying to find somewhere that's available at a time that firstly suits you 
but also is likely to be a time where other people are available and not working. A little tip that I found really helpful is to take a couple of yoga mats with you when you go to look around a new space so that you can physically put them down on the floor, lay out different rows and figure out how many yoga mats you could comfortably fit within that space. I know some people are really good at spatial awareness and might be able to just look at the space and figure out how many mats would fit. I'm not one of those people, so I always take a couple of mats so I can get a really clear picture of how many spaces I will be able to offer in that class. Then once you've found a venue that you know is available at a good time that you're happy with and you've figured out how many spaces are going to be available within that class, from that you can then work out a pricing structure. How much are you going to charge for your classes? It's worth looking around the local area, see what the average price is for yoga classes near you. This will vary massively from cities to towns. Have a think about how much you're being charged for the venue and how many spaces you're gonna be able to offer. I've always liked having a standard rate for just a one-off drop-in class and then also offering slightly cheaper class passes. Now this of course is great for you as the business owner because it's a little bit more revenue coming in in one chunk, but also as the customer, the people coming along to your classes, they're more likely to stick with it and to stay motivated to hold themselves accountable if they know that they've got five or ten classes to use up over the next couple of months. If they get booked in in advance for a series of classes they're far more likely to stay disciplined, stay with it, rather than just booking a class here or there when they feel like it. The next step is to set up a website and find a booking system. Websites are so easy to make these days. I use Wix, but you've got things like Squarespace, WordPress. You can literally set up a really basic website in about 20 minutes. You don't need to fill it up with loads of text. You don't need loads of pages. I would say keep it as simple as possible. If you can, make your booking system right there on the front page so that people don't have to click through and scroll through to figure out how to book a class. Having a book Booking system in place from day one is going to save you endless hours of admin in the future. I use Bookwen now as my booking system. I've used it for years. I think it's brilliant. It's pretty affordable. It's pretty user friendly. There are other great systems around, I'm sure. That's just one that I happened upon a few years ago. And a nice thing if you have a booking system is you can have a cancellation policy. So I have very clearly on my booking site 24 hours notice for any changes or cancellations. This means that if someone at the very last minute decides not to come or just doesn't show up, they've already booked that class and paid for it in advance through the booking system and they know that the policy is 24 hours so they will have lost any payment from that. Now I'll just sort of caveat all of that with it does depend if you are just running yoga classes for enjoyment rather than trying to make your living from teaching yoga, you probably don't need to be quite so strict with all of this stuff but if you are in a position where you're trying to make a living through teaching yoga, then cancellation policies and booking systems are really critical. And now for the hardest step, getting people to actually turn up. You might be tempted to go straight onto social media and start posting and sharing about your classes, but do one more thing first, which is sit down for a moment and think about exactly who your classes are for. What is it that you're offering? Can you write a three or four line description of what your classes are and who they're open to? Is it an all levels class where you're going to cater to complete beginners and give options for more advanced practitioners as well? Or is it a class that is specifically catered to complete beginners? Is it open to all ages and genders or is it a more specific class that you're looking to put on for athletes, runners, cyclists or for new mums who want to get a bit more social time as well as doing a yoga practice? Think about exactly who your classes are for and then you can start to go into that advertising phase of opening it up for bookings. The thing that really helped for me to grow a client base quite quickly was to offer a free trial class. And this was brilliant. It meant that the first ever class that I opened up, it filled up and I actually had to turn a couple of people away because I hadn't figured out exactly who was coming and we didn't have enough space. I had 20 odd people in the first class because I offered it as a freebie. Now, not all of those 20 people came back. In fact, probably half of them I never saw again, but half of them I did. Then the final step, the most exciting one is 
is to just go and do the thing, to go and teach the classes, to open it up and get started. It may take a little while to get a regular client base through the door, so be patient. Your classes don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the most elaborate sequences of postures. They just have to be authentically from you. The thing that people will come back for again and again is you, your personality, what you offer and what you bring to the classes. Be friendly, get to know people and enjoy it. I hope this has been helpful. If there are any questions, leave them in the comments below and here are some more videos that you might be interested in. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.